President Trump admitting on tape he knew how deadly this coronavirus was back in February. Now, that matters because it's evidence showing Trump was deliberately misleading the nation about this threat as he played it down. This was before it really even hit the U.S. So listen to these tapes, which really offer more damning evidence and seem even worse today than when Trump said these words in February. Take a look here. We're going to play for you the newly released material. It's a very tricky situation. It's uh, it, it goes is. it goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. You know, the touch you don't have to touch things, right? But the air, you just breathe the air, and that's how it's uh, passed. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. You know, people don't realize we lose 25,000, 30,000 people a year here. Who, who would ever think that, right? I know. It's I mean, much it's pretty forgotten. amazing. And uh, then I say, well, is that the same thing? For, this is uh, more for deadly. This is five per, you know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. Deadly stuff. And he had the data top of mind. These excerpts are new from the Washington Post, as I mentioned, from legendary Watergate reporter Bob Woodward. Now, we don't know what came before or after Trump telling Woodward that the virus was so deadly, worse than strenuous flus, but this was February 7th. At the time, Americans were living through normal pre-pandemic lives. There were just 12 cases in the country, a flat case count, to say the least. But Trump had the intel then in secret, and according to him, he believed it. Woodward reports also that Trump's national security advisor warned this was the biggest national security threat the president would face. By March 19th, it was a growing crisis, 4,000 cases, 48 deaths, quarantines on the East Coast. And Woodward, in the next clip I'm going to play you, he presents these facts pretty diplomatically and just asks point blank how Donald Trump came to pivot in his approach to the virus. But as I was just discussing with Nicole, in what is pretty damning, Trump's own words, he stresses... In this taped interview, his goal was just to play it all down. It's clear just from what's in on the public record that you went through a pivot on this to, oh, my God, the gravity is uh, almost inexplicable and unexplainable. Well, I think, Bob, really, to be honest with you, sure, I want you to I be. wanted to uh, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. Now, pandemic experts were not concerned at that juncture about panic. They were concerned about apathy, because getting the facts out about these dangers, what Trump called this deadly virus, so much worse than the flu, getting those facts out, as you probably know by now as a news viewer, can help save lives. Woodward shows that Donald Trump knew it was deadly in February, which makes it all the more damning that he was telling his own supporters after that publicly these falsehoods. A lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat as the heat comes in. Uh, typically, that will go away in April. We're in great shape. We're going to be pretty soon at only five people. And we could be at just one or two people over the next short period of time. But that's a little bit like the flu. It's a little like the regular flu that we have flu shots for. And we'll essentially have a flu shot for this in a fairly quick manner. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Yes. And from our shores, we've, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. Nobody really knows. Nobody really knows. That's a common expression the president uses. What's important here is that he knew. He knew the facts. He knew the dangers. He knew this was deadly and said so himself. He just wanted to play it down, compared to the flu, when he knew it was far worse. On February 7th, the day that Trump revealed the dangers to Woodward, the case count at that point, as mentioned, was flat. Here's how it looks since then. That downplaying approach to governing and communications was wrong, and you could see the massive spike, 6.3 million recorded cases nationwide. We are approaching 192,000 deaths. The president responded today by saying that his goal was always to keep people calm and avoid a, quote, frenzy. That's his spin tonight after being caught on tape. It is personal. I think it's psychological. He is trying to kill New York City. And now, 
No federal funds for New York City and New York State post-COVID. Donald Trump caused the COVID outbreak in New York. Donald Trump caused the COVID outbreak in New York. That is a fact. It's a fact that he admitted, and the CDC admitted, and Fauci admitted, the China virus, the China virus, the China virus. It was not the China virus. It was the European virus that came to New York. They missed it. They missed it. The China virus went to Europe. It got on a plane. It went to Europe. They never even thought of the possibility. And then three million Europeans got on the plane and came to New York. And they brought the virus. January, they brought the virus. February, they brought the virus. March, they brought the virus. And in mid-March, the federal government does a travel ban from Europe. Mid-March, too little, too late, Mr. President, he caused the COVID outbreak in New York. Donald Trump and his incompetent CDC and his incompetent NIH and his incompetent Department of Homeland Security. Department of Homeland Security. We're going to protect the people of this nation. We're not going to let the immigrants come across the southern border. We're going to create a wall. Why did you stop the virus? The virus killed many more Americans than anything you were worried about on the southern border. This nation loses more people per day to COVID than any nation on the globe. Do you hear that point? We lose more people per day to COVID than any nation on the globe. You know who did that? Donald Trump's incompetence. And now they won't provide federal funding to help repair the damage from the ambush they created. That's where we are. Um, it is true that there has been a learning curve for many people. Uh, and it's always easier in hindsight to look back and say, gosh, in September, what we think about where this headed feels very different than when everyone was learning on the fly in, say, March. Um, but people like you inside a White House, people like the president, uh, tend to have a jump on those things. What is interesting or striking to you about the fact that the president was already taking off uh, the data on the death rate uh, before this had hit the U.S.? Well, he, he knew how serious this was going to be. His national security advisor told him, and then he told Bob Woodward how serious it was going to be and how uncontrollable it was going to be. And the fact that he didn't take decisive action on February 7th has meant that 190,000 Americans have died. Maybe less, well, we're sure less would have died had we taken decisive action on February 7th, action that would be similar to, say, what Taiwan did uh, to lock down and to prevent uh, um, uh, it, people coming into the country and it spreading on the country, and to lie repeatedly to the public about not wearing masks, not social distancing, and having a rally like he had in North Carolina, which flouted all of this. You know, he really is uh, got a lot of blood on his hands because many people ended up dying needlessly because of the way he managed the government and encourage people to do things that we know increase the transmission rate and increase the risk of dying. And that is a horrible place to have a president. That is not leadership. That is a failure of leadership.